we learned how to run one processing tool on one input and generate some output. This can be used where you want to try different parameter combination and generate different versions of that output. Sometimes we want to run multiple tools where you want to build a processing chain. Let's say in this example, we have our SRTM layer. We have this another shape file with the area of San Francisco. This is the show line file, which is the show line representing the show line of San Francisco. Let's say I want to generate hill shade, but only for this region. So I want to take this raster layer and I want to clip it first to this region and then generate hill shade for that. So I want to do two operations, first a clip operation and then a hill shade operation. How can I do this completely in code? So let's first do this using our tool. So we'll start with our code. So for clipping the raster, we have this tool here, clip raster by mask layer. So I'm going to first say, take this SRTM layer, my mask layer is show line layer, and that's it. I want to run it with all the default parameters and you get a clipped layer. So you can see this is the clip layer. So this is my first operation that I want to do. I'm going to take this code that we just ran. So I'm going to go to the history and say, this was the code that we ran for clipping my layer with the other layer. Many times these algorithms will have a lot of parameters. Most of them are optional. Remember, we just give two parameters, input and out in the clip layer. The rest, everything we left it to the default one. So I can just say, I want input to be this, my mask layer to be this. The rest, just keep it as default. I don't want to even define those. Whatever those are, we can just keep it as default. And this will generate our layer. So this is our first part and we'll just save the results here. Let me print the results. If I run this, you can see it generates some output, a dictionary, it has an output and the diff file. I can also check whether the layer got generated correctly. I can just say run and load results. This is just to check if the algorithm works. I don't need to load it because this is an intermediate step. So you can see I was able to clip and load this layer correctly. So it works. I want to just say, I don't want to load this in QGIS because this is an intermediate step. So I have my results. The result is a dictionary and there's one key called output. So if I want to get a path to this layer that was generated, I can just say my clipped layer is actually this dictionary and with key output. And if I now print my clipped dim variable, it should just have the path to the TIFF file that got generated as an intermediate step. All the processing algorithm will return a dictionary of all the output it generated. Many algorithms will gen can generate more than one output. So that's why it's a dictionary. Sometimes we'll have output one, output two, if the algorithm generated multiple layers. But now we have a path to the, the DM. We know how to run a hill shade on a DM. We did this in a previous step. So I can now just say, I have a clip DM. I will just say processing dot run and load result. I'll run the hill shade algorithm on this clip DM and load it on QGIS. So now I have a script which first goes and clips the layer and then runs the hill shade on the clip version. So I'm starting with the full SRTM layer. I have a short line and now I run the script and I directly get the hill shade for this. So I did two steps. The first one was intermediate layer. I didn't load it to QGIS. I just got the path to it, use that path in the next algorithm. And then we ran this and loaded the result. And you can keep going. If you have an algorithm which contains 10 steps, keep going, take this results. If I print the results here, it'll also have the path to output. And again, you can reuse the variable name or I can just say results of two and print this results too. And you can see this one also has an output path to this file. And you can keep going, take this, use it in the next step and so on. This is how you can build the processing chain by using multiple processing commands. Super powerful, the QGIS algorithms have a lot of diverse functionality and you can now combine them within themselves or even with external libraries. Let's try this out. Section 8.2, you can copy this code and paste it here. We are making the code readable, readable instead of kind of writing the path like this, we are constructing the path from the data package. So a slight different version than what I showed, we just, take the name of the diff file, construct the path using the os.path.join and you here. So go and copy the code, 
run it and you should directly see the hill shade for the clipped tip. A pro tip for people who are doing raster calculations, if you use QGIS and raster calculator, there are many raster calculators available in your processing toolbox. There's one called raster calculator. This is what you would use if you are doing the processing. I find that configuring this raster calculator using Python is sometimes very painful. How do you refer to the first band of the second layer and do this? I find that the GDAL raster calculator is much, much easier to configure using Python. So if you are doing raster calculation using Python, use this raster calculator, which comes with GDAL. It's just much easier to configure using Python. If you're just doing processing using your regular processing, this raster calculator works fine. If you want to see another example of how running this processing tools in a loop or in a chain like this will be helpful, I have a tutorial which has some practical example of how you can do this. This is actually going to run this for 12 months. You want to extract some data for each month. Instead of running this tool 12 times manually, you can just run it in iteration for each month and then combine all the output all in a single pass versus kind of do this thing manually in QGIS. So you can go and check out this tutorial if you want to get more practice on how to run processing tools using Python. Let's do an exercise where you'll get to explore a new tool, do some analysis, and then find the Python command and run it using Python. Vigna, you can explain the exercise six. 